What's going on everybody? Welcome to Command and Console. My name is Jason. Today we are going to give the PlayStation 3 some attention and some love. So with that in mind, I decided to go down to my local charity shop and my local CX and see what we could find for the PlayStation 3. And uh, yeah, uh, before we kick off into the CX footage as usual, I did go to my local uh, children's hospice charity. And I got no footage for that. Uh, I'm a bit I'm a bit iffy about recording in, in charity shops. They don't tend to like it that much, especially around where I live. But yeah, I went into my local children's hospice charity and we found three titles for PS3. Uh, one I plan to keep, two I plan to trade in to give us a bit of a little bit of profit to get i think probably some uh, more interesting titles that i'm looking for so the titles uh, they had were need for speed pro street now i've got a feeling that i kind of feel like i want to collect the need for speed games on ps3 yeah pro street everyone from what i can tell didn't like this game but i had tons of fun with this one and i've really enjoyed it that's the game i'm keeping that's need to be pro street thankfully in this charity shop these games were in very good condition complete with manual as well so it's always a good a good sign next up we have i'm tempted to keep this one but um i, I get a three pound trade in and i paid five for the three of these five pounds so i get three pound for this uh, driver san francisco the reason why i do plan to trade this is solely because uh, the xbox 360 version is backwards compatible with the new xbox so i'd rather get that one for the collection but this is also complete in box there that's driver san francisco i've heard really good things about this one but i've never played it so i'm going to be on the lookout for the 360 version so that is driver san francisco the final game in this little charity shop pickup is a uh, little big planet karting uh, i get four pound trading for this one so in theory uh, both of these games will pay uh, for the uh, whole uh, charity lot so seven trading for these so essentially i got this for nothing so it's great to add this to the collection and i'm going to trade these on and see what else we can get for ps3 down the line so it comes to our cx trip and let's have a look at some footage and see what they had in store for us and see what i really kind of had to look out for and see what games i picked up let's have a look at the footage so we are at the ps3 section and we're just going to be looking through the shelves for anything decent uh anarchy reigns is a quite forgotten uh, platinum games game i never really got on with it myself bionic commando by capcom i think that's a forgotten remake that no one really talks about i think it was shat on big time anyway there's nothing really catching my eye in the b's but in the c's we have crisis 2 for 150 not too bad but there is the, re the the remastered collection which i'd rather get dark sector is a pretty cool kind of like small time game that i remember having a lot of fun with and um, for 150 it isn't too bad dark void is another weird kind of like small time game by capcom that i think didn't get very good reviews but for 150 I could consider it for today's PS3 adventure, I suppose, if you want to call it an adventure. We got one of the Fight Night games there. Never played any of the Fight Night, Fight Night games. I've never really been into sport that much. Um, but like that could change. I could give those kind of combat sports a go. We're going to G, God of War Ascension, a really um, kind of forgotten spin off game on ps3 for god of war but uh, not a game i really feel like picking up right now juice 2 i remember mentioning that i don't like juice 2 that much but i've not played it in years killer is dead is a interesting one by suda 51 uh the kings of amula reckoning is one of, one of my favorite rpgs ever but i do plan to get the remastered version i almost picked up that layer game but i did have the manual so i kind of gave it a miss there see what i mean i've got loads of need for speed games there i really want to do I really want to collect all the Need for Speed games. Ninja Gaiden Sigma. I love Ninja Gaiden, but that Sigma version for PS3 has been watered down to death. And I didn't really think it was that great. Uh, the original Xbox version is, is the way to go, I think, for that game. Remember Me is, I think, a fairly underrated Capcom game. With, with quite fun combat and stuff like that. You can like hack memories and stuff. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. 
Two Worlds 2. I, I do want to get this, but I don't want it for PS3. I want it for 360 because I've got the original game on 360. So it kind of just, add, it just kind of makes sense to have them kind of together. Spec Ops The Line is a really good game. Story-wise in particular, the gameplay is a bit generic and a bit typical kind of modern military third-person shooter. UFC, I'm, I'm intrigued by the UFC games. So, as you can see, they had a really kind of sizable PS3 selection this time around. Some really cool titles in there. I was really tempted to pick up some of the more heavy hitter titles that, this time around, but I thought I'm going to keep it small time. I'm going to keep it to a small budget. Uh, I spent £8.50 on this lot. Uh, really happy with the titles I picked up. Uh, some mix, mix of titles here. Really happy. Let's get into what I picked up. So, I'm going to kick it off with... I picked up a couple of sports titles because I've been watching some uh, kind of sports uh, YouTube stuff lately. I've gotten into a bit of this kind of YouTube sport side of things. More document documentary side of stuff rather than actually watching the actual sports. But it got me into like, you know, actually, I actually fancy to try out some of the sports titles I've never actually played before. So I picked up Fight Night Round 4. I thought I'd try this one out because I've never actually played a simulation boxing game before. I have played like arcade boxing games like the rocky game that came out all those years ago and like ready to rumble stuff like that so i've played those more arcade titles but these ones uh, that are really trying to be the simulation boxing never played so i thought i'd give this a shot complete inbox really happy about this one let me know if you've played these ones i know there's a big fan base for fight night champion uh, which i wanted to get but it was outside what i really wanted to pay but yeah i thought i settled for this one Fight Night Round 4. The second sports title is UFC Undisputed 2009. I watched these really cool documentaries by a channel called 616 Entertainment. Uh, he does a, he's, he's been doing a big breakdown of the UFC video games, the history of the UFC video games. And this one in particular looked absolutely great. Um, I have no clue what to expect from this gameplay, whether it's going to be really hardcore simulation or it's going to have a bit more of a arcadey feel let's face it i'm not expecting tekken from this but you get my drift I'm, I'm i'm pretty much looking forward to seeing how this plays never played a ufc game before i don't even watch ufc but um six wise and six entertainments video really kind of got me interested in the game so let's see whether this one is good this was a quid as well so it's really good complete in box uh, so happy about that that's ufc next up is a arena shooter i did speak about unreal tournament in my PS Project PS2 video, so I thought I'd pick up its sequel, Unreal Tournament 3. I did briefly mention it in my previous video, that it's got more of a campaign, if you're looking for an issue of a campaign. Uh, but this one, yeah, I'm, I'm interested because of the campaign, uh, and it could be really good. I did like Unreal Tournament and Unreal Championship back in the day, so this has got an actual story campaign. It could be pretty decent, uh, complete in box. Um, I like how this, it's got more of a Gears of War look to it. Back in the back in the era where uh, games were pretty much brown and grey in their aesthetics for some reason. But I'm hoping this will add a bit more colour to it. I'm, I'm sure like the red aesthetic might be a bit more prominent in this one. But that is Unreal Tournament 3. These next three titles are quite some obscure titles that I feel has been forgotten. That didn't get very good ratings when they came out. But I, I feel like they might be decent. One in particular I actually generally liked back in the day. The first title comes from Capcom. I remember this game being pretty much dead on arrival when it came out. I remember people absolutely hating it. Obviously it's a remake or reimagining of the original NES 8-bit titles that came out. But like I thought to myself, these were 150 these last three games I'm going to show. So I thought for 150, it could be a generic 5 out of 10 game, but for £1.50, I'm probably going to find some love, it, some, some love and enjoyment from it. And if you don't know about me guys, I, I can forgive kind of janky games uh for their jank you know sometimes i find that these kind of mid-tier janky games can be a, have a bit more heart to them and be a bit more enjoyable obviously when, you, when it's coming from capcom you expect a bit more quality but i digress there this might still be a really just kind of fun little kind of average kind of a third person shooter with this kind of almost like bionic arm swinging mechanic in there i have no idea what it's like but uh it might be enjoyable that's Bionic Commando, again, complete inbox. Next up is a, another uh, title from Capcom uh, that I fairly enjoyed uh, to a point if, from what I remember, and it is Dark Void. Um, I thought this game was a pretty fun, like I said, you know, five, six out of 10 title that was just 
exactly what you get on the tin. Uh, you've got a jetpack, you fly around, you drop down into little kind of biomes and zones, and you have third person shooting action. I thought it was pretty decent for the time. Uh, obviously, another thing amazing, but it was pretty fun. Like, I had a good time with it. Uh, not sure how it's going to hold up these days. It might be just terrible going back to it. But again, complete inbox. Like I said, man, like these kind of generic 5 out of 10 kind of like, you know, bargain bin kind of titles, there, there's got to be some fun there, right? There's got to be, you know, for me, if you know me, like I said, I like games like Two Worlds and everyone dunks on that game. And that game was really fun. I had a lot of fun with it. I thought that, I think Two Worlds had a really good sense of its world and exploration, in my opinion. Everything else of it was bad, but I found fun in that. So for 150, I, I, I can't see how I could not find fun in something like Dark Void, where I found a little bit of fun back in the day. But, you know, who knows? But I mean, for 150, I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna give these games a shot. You know, Capcom already has piqued my interest in this anyway. Uh but yeah, uh back in the day I had some enjoyment from it. Don't know how it's gonna hold up now, but you never know, it might ever be a bit of fun. That's Dark Void. The final game is probably out of all of these uh, that I've actually played, uh probably the best game in the bunch, uh, in my opinion. And the game is a game called Dark Sector. Now this came out hot off the heels from Resident Evil 4 and I wanted something of a similar style and this kind of give, gave me that but obviously had this whole new mechanic the glaive mechanic you had this weird kind of batarang kind of bladed thing you throw and it kind of cuts people up it comes back to you um, really fun gameplay over the shoulder shooting with that glaive mechanic uh, obviously you can, you can get upgrades and stuff like that where you actually can control the glaive in midair in slow motion and that target who you want to target and cut them up really fun um do how it like again with most of his games i ain't got a clue how this is going to hold up going back to it but again for one pound 50 and it's complete in box you just never know if these are going to be held if it's going to hold up but i remember just having a lot of fun with this one uh i can't remember if i beat it or not back in the day i might have done but i just remember it being kind of almost like that word again that term again hidden gem but i think it might be like the, I think these kind of games are forgotten, these kind of like mid-tier kind of 5 out of 10 games that are kind of just trapped on like, you know, 8th generation. This this is this is no longer, or 7th generation should I say. Yeah, this is like trapped on 7th generation and this is where these kind of get forgotten because they come out, they don't get very well received and they just kind of die a death and just kind of vanish. But I think it's people like me and other collectors like yourself that kind of remember these kind of mid-tier titles and kind of push them for people to check them out because they're really fun. And for 150, you can't really go wrong, I don't think. And if you're looking for that kind of over-the-shoulder action game a la Resident Evil 4, but have a bit of a different flavor to it, Dark Sector's a really good one. And uh, I'm hoping it holds up and is as good as I remember. But yeah, that's a fun game. That's Dark Sector. So that's it guys, that is my little haul for PS3. Really happy about my titles there. Some really uh, kind of oddball titles in there, but I wanted to get some bit of variety, of, bit, of, bit of everything in variety there. A couple of sports titles, a couple of over the shoulder shooting action ones, and, and a racing title as well. So yeah, I really wanted to delve into my PS3 collection a bit more and add to it because I, I did put a post up recently about my tiny little lonely PS3 collection. I did get a question from a, um, a subscriber you know, why don't I just focus on uh, PS3 exclusives and then just get the third party stuff on 360? That is a very valid question and I appreciate the suggestion. But sometimes it's all about, you know, what's cheaper. If something is cheaper on PS3, I'm going to go the PS3 version. Uh, if it's tied to like nostalgia, like if I had the game on PS3, that's where I'm going to pick it up. It's all, it's, it's all variables, right? It's all different things that take place into my decisions here. For example, Driver. You know, I, I picked it up in the charity shop, free for a fiver, but I know that the 360 version is superior because I can play it on a modern system. I weigh these things up a bit differently than just, oh, the 360 version is better for third party and the, the PS3 is better for exclusives. I think it goes a bit deeper than that. And I think it's about your memories growing up with the system and also cost and stuff like that. So I'm finding PS3 to be very cheap at the moment and that's why I'm kind of validating PS3 for certain titles over 360. But I digress there, guys. So yeah, that, that's the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. 
I really appreciate everyone that's watching the video, subscribing, commenting. It really does mean a lot to me, guys. So yeah, as always, guys, let's continue to build a games collection.